Thanks for stopping by. Genmitsu just sent me their 4040 Pro Max CNC machine to check out and let you know what I think about it. Let's take a look at this thing together. Well, first thing is, it's definitely well packed. It's very well protected. The first thing I noticed when I was unpacking this I knew that it came with these MDF panels and I thought that's what was making the box so heavy. But these individual pieces are really heavy. This thing's got to be about 20 pounds maybe, just this one section. And this comes with, this isn't uh, a little tiny spindle like you'd see on a 3018. This is just about a full size trim router. was super easy to put together and everything seems nice and sturdy. Let's start checking it out. Goes up. Goes that way. I didn't mean for this video to be a tutorial on how to use your CNC. It's more an overview of what this machine's capable of and some project ideas to help you out in the workshop. The first thing I wanted to try is making a simple box with dividers and I found a website that will create the SVG files for you. So you just go to makercase.com, I'll put a link down below in the description for the website and you pick how wide, how deep, how tall you want your box to be, set up how many dividers you want going vertically and horizontally, and you can save your SVG file. One thing that you need to do when you're working with the CNC is you need to set the radius of whatever bit you're going to be using in your router because the sharp corners on the plywood won't fit properly if you have a rounded corner, so you need to make a little relief. And... It's kind of hard to see on the screen, but trust me, it puts a little notch in the corners that will allow the pieces to fit together better. But you just download this file and then bring it into the software of your choice. I'm using Carbide Create, and you bring the file in, and you may need to move some pieces around to fit your stock or even split it up into two different files depending on how big of a box you want to make but it's fairly simple to do. Just put your pieces where you want them and then you can save the tool path and open it up in your next piece of software. To run my jobs, I'm using Candle, which came with the CNC. And one problem that I have is whenever I use Carbide Create to create my tool paths, it always adds a tool change command at the beginning. So I always go in and delete that in Candle. But once you bring your job in, you can just zero out your machine, set everything where you need it, and just send your commands and the machine will start cutting. One accessory that I definitely recommend you get with your CNC is a dust boot like I'm showing you here. This thing is amazing. You hook it up to your shop vac and wow, does it keep the mess down. And it's very inexpensive. So that's probably the first upgrade you want to make to your CNC or just order it with your CNC when you get it. Whenever you're working on a project like this where you're cutting your pieces out completely, you want to set up tabs in whatever software you're going to use and that just leaves little pieces of material that you have to cut with a utility knife or something else and that keeps the pieces that you cut out from shifting around when you're finishing up your final pass. Once I trimmed all my tabs off, all the pieces fit together perfectly. It's 
great when you have software like this box maker that you can design something like this. Of course, this is just a test to see how it worked, and it came out great. The next thing that I wanted to try is doing inlay work. So I found the design that I wanted to use online and just brought it into Carbide Create. I ditched the text. I just want to do the emblem. And you have to size it to fit the stock that you're working with and center it how you want it. And then you just set up your toolpath to dig out the pocket where the inlay is going to sit and save that file or the toolpath for that. And then you need to take that same file and set up to cut out the pieces that you're going to put into it. And I took those pieces and rearranged them because I wanted the wood grain to go in a certain direction on the pieces that are going to go in there. I thought it would look a little bit better. To cut out the veneer, I started by putting masking tape on a piece of MDF and on the back of my veneer. And then I just put some super glue on the back of the veneer and spread it out a little bit, sprayed some activator on the other piece and use this to hold it in place because there's no real good way to clamp it other than this. And you need it to be really flat. So that's why I went with this. After you've finished cutting out your veneer, it's really cool to see the pieces come apart. You know, you peel off your waist section, and then you have to very carefully separate your veneer from your backer board um, because it's very thin. It can crack very easily. So just take your time when you're peeling these little pieces off and try not to split it along the wood grain. You can always glue it if you have an accident, but... Just take your time, they'll come off really easily. After I got all my pieces in place, I just put some wax paper over top of it and a couple of layers of paper towel to help push them down into place when I made my sandwich with a clamping board on top. One of the benefits of this machine over a 3018 is it's much larger and it has a much higher height to it. So you can do larger projects like this one. And you can see here, sometimes you have to get a little creative with the way you're going to clamp things down. But this one, I'm going to be doing some epoxy pour onto the initials that I'm engraving into this piece here. And sometimes you'll find when you're done engraving something, there's a little bit of fuzz left around the edges. But if you just take a toothbrush or a wire brush and rub it along the edges, it'll knock all that little fuzz off and you'll end up with nice clean edges for whatever you're working on. If you've never done epoxy before, whenever you're pouring it into something, you need to create a little dam around your design or whatever you're going to pour it into. So I'm just using similar to silicone. This stuff's called Lexol, but it sticks a little bit better. And I'm just making a dam around my design. And then I'll start with my epoxy. The epoxy is pretty simple to work with. You just take a little bit of part A, a little bit of part B some of your dye, stir it all together, 
and then pour it into your design and wait for it to cure. That's an overview of the Genmitsu 4040 Pro Max and some of the projects you can make with it. And what you can do with this machine, you're really only limited by your imagination. If you're on the fence between a machine like this or the more budget-friendly 3018s, click the link down below and check out the specs on this machine. It's not just the width and the depth of the machine, but it's also the height and the huge difference is this comes with a real router it's not a lightweight spindle, so this is going to allow you to handle much larger bits and your jobs are going to be able to run a lot faster when you have a real router instead of a lightweight spindle. I really appreciate you taking the time to stop and watch my video and hopefully if you found something interesting, you'll take the time to hit the thumbs up button. It doesn't cost anything. And if you didn't like it, hit the thumbs up button twice to let me know you really didn't like it. Thanks for watching.